three parenting mistakes that harm your children. There are some parenting mistakes that can be truly harmful to children. And over the years of working intensively with multilingual kids, I've come to realize that parents are often not aware of these mistakes. They normally have the best intentions and believe they are being helpful and supportive, but in fact, in some cases, the contrary is the case. So I believe that cosmopolitan parents like you have the right to know what is good for a child's healthy development, which also, by the way, impacts their language skill progress. Stick with me to hear about three parenting mistakes that harm children in a moment. Parenting mistake number one, overprotection. Parents that have their fears under control give their kids more freedom, trusting in their abilities, thus allowing them to have plenty of experiences to fail and learn from their own mistakes. I'm going to repeat that because this is so important to realize early. Parents that have their fears under control give their kids more freedom, trusting in their abilities, thus allowing them to have plenty of experiences to fail and learn from their own mistakes. This doesn't mean that being completely fearless and not looking after your child is the aim. Like in many other things in life, somewhere in the middle between being protective and letting go lies the idea. What I know for sure is that overprotection hinders a healthy development in kids. Let's explore this in detail. Yesterday I was with my three-year-old outside with his scooter. We were playing in the neighborhood of the ballet class of my daughter waiting for her to finish her lesson. Together with, with a friend, which also has a three-year-old child, we were walking down a sidewalk next to a street. The road was quite steep and further down was an intersection with many cars. My son, Niels, was at first next to me on his scooters, but with his foot on the brake. He looked quickly at me, like asking, may I go? And I nodded, but I didn't take my eyes off of him and even stop talking to my friend to focus on him, you know, to be prepared in case I had to throw everything to the side and run after him if he couldn't catch the curve at the right time. So after I nodded, Niels released his foot from the brake went faster and faster down the road and at the right time he curved with both feet on the board to the right where the parking lot was. It looked pretty cool and impressive and he looked so so proud of himself. In that moment my child learned three things. The first thing, my mom trusts in my abilities, she believes I can do it and so I can. Secondly, I am good with my scooter and I can manage to drive on difficult roads if I'm focused. And another thing that he learned is I'm capable of doing things on my own without needing help. In other words, through this experience, he could strengthen his self-esteem. My friend just looked at me with big eyes and said, how could you let your son go down that road alone? He did it very well, but I could have never let my child do the same. And so I thought to myself, exactly. And that is the reason why he can't do the same at this point, because he hasn't been given the chance to even try. So by being afraid that something bad might happen, what ends up happening is that the fear transfers to the child. Fearful parents tend to have fearful kids. But more importantly, what the child learns from parents that don't let go is I can't do it, that's why I'm not allowed to do it. I need help, I'm not good enough for this task. And the third thing that they learn is I won't even try because my parents don't believe I, I can do it, so I probably can't. Can you see the devastating effects these thoughts can have on a child's development. If children are overprotected and not allowed to try things out according to their age, obviously, in various situations on their lives over several years, for example, for the first 60 years of their lives, they are in big disadvantage in comparison to other kids of their age that were allowed to try, to fail, to learn from their mistakes thousands of times. So it's not surprising that once kids start in first grade, huge differences in abilities are noticeable. But of course, how a child develops depends on so many facts that I won't even get into that. But 
One of the reasons why these big differences even exist is the parenting mistake of overprotection. So please let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section. Thanks. Parenting mistake number two, fake reinforcement. Reinforcing kids in positive behaviors is important to build up their self-esteem. This is crucial for the language development of multilingual children. They need to develop confidence to deal with all their languages in various situations in their lives. For example, if your child never talks to you in your language, but one time she does, then that would be a good time to give her verbal reinforcement and attention, saying something like, I love how you replied to me. I knew you could do it. This words together with an appropriate body language will motivate your child to keep making efforts because kids seek the attention of their parents. That is how you start a positive chain reaction. So far so good? Now, when I say fake reinforcement, I mean parents that exaggerate and make their kids think that they are something that they are not. So if parents constantly tell their kids something like, you are the smartest child and the best and what uh, you do is extraordinary. Sure, kids have sometimes abilities that are well developed, but most of the kids are just normal. Children that get too positive feedback from their parents develop a distorted picture of themselves. At first, they might build up a confidence bubble, but by the time they are in school, that bubble pops because they might start realizing that they are not the smartest, that their abilities are okay, but not extraordinary, and that they have indeed still lots to learn. So what happens with these kids? They get confused. What is right now? what my parents say or what the feedback of the outside world tells me. These kids might become quiet, might get depressed. The power tip here is, by all means, encourage your multilingual children. Acknowledge their progress, their achievements, even if they are very small. Reinforce the wanted behavior to trigger a cascade of the same behavior. But be honest, don't exaggerate, don't lie to them that won't be of any help in the long run. Please press the like button and share this video if you are getting value out of this. Thank you. Parenting mistake number three, overfilled schedules. Never before have kids been so stressed out than today. The cases of burnout in children and adults are on the rise. We know that technology and the social media and our fast paced lives are part of the problem. Now, multilingual children are working constantly on various languages and they might not realize it, but being multilingual means constant brain workout, which is good, but it also requires rest, enough rest. A big parenting mistake of our modern lives is not making sure that kids have a quiet, relaxing space to rest after a day of school. Obviously, it is good to put them in extracurricular activities to make them learn an instrument, do sports, crafts, and so on, but the key lies in the quantity. Less is often more. Multilingual children need to have enough time to process what they have been learning, and that means that they need from eight to 10 hours of sleep every night and enough time during the week to just be. Get bored, time to come down to daydream, time to regenerate and process everything that they have been exposed to, time to play outside in nature. See, there is a fine line between supporting and overwhelming a child. Make sure you are not overwhelming your child so that they can focus on and concentrate on what is truly important. Every child is different, you will need to observe your child or your children closely to know what is best for each of them. Thanks for joining me today. If you wish a personal consultation for your multilingual family, just contact me, all the information is in the description below. Watch also these other videos, please leave me a comment, keep on doing a great job and talk to you soon.